Well, do we got a surprise this week, my friends. As you guys might now know, we have a new version for Blender. See, I'm no pro Maya or pro Seabrush. I'm pro 3D. I don't care about the software. I'm always happy to see new things on the environments. So, uh, yeah, this is the the new like a uh, plugin or the new like thing that we're gonna be seeing here inside of Blender. And believe it or not, my friends, this right here that you're watching is Eevee. I'm actually showcasing the new Eevee thing. Let me jump very quickly to the site so that you guys can see. So the main update for this 4.2 thing was uh, Eevee, and there's a bunch of things I'm gonna show you some of them uh, in just a second they now have this environment that can provide light as if it was the sun so as you can see this scene right here is being lit only by an like an environment light very very cool similar to an hdri it, it, it's funny because it, it now has pretty much ray tracing inside of eevee which is awesome similar to what we have inside of unreal but they're not calling it ray tracing because they're using some like some other math or something to to generate this sort of thing uh, we have displacement, that's very, very cool. And you can see it right here. Let me go here to shading. So if I go here, you can see that the scale now, look at that. That's real time displacement right there. This is the, of course, the, the X from our Blender course, which even though we did this back in 3.6, it's still completely like valid for the pipeline that we normally use. And as you can see now, you don't even need to use the cycles to do the final renders. You can do them directly here with um, Eevee. So real time displacement is awesome for Eevee. This is a huge, huge addition, I would say. I'm, I'm sure we're gonna be seeing a lot of very, very cool renders soon because of that. And uh, let's take a look at what else. We got uh, more subsurface scattering. I haven't really played with this one just yet. We got some volume, which as you can see right here, it's also this thing right there. So as you can see, the volume now behaves a little bit nicer. Uh, in this particular scene, especially when I get close to the axe, we don't see too much of that volume, but still like very, very cool. And uh, some uh, depth of field as well, or blurry motion blur as well for animations. I don't have an animation right now, so I'm not gonna be able to show you this right now. But yeah, there we go. Look at this. Look at all of these things for Eevee. Um, there are a couple of things that are deprecated, so you're gonna have to fix them. I'm gonna show you one real quick that's very, very important. Before, inside of Cycles, we would need to use the compositing node to use a glare node so that we could see the glare inside of the element. And a couple of versions ago, if you were to go to the Blender or uh, Render settings, you would find a specific Bloom option. Bloom is no longer present in Blender 4.2, and I think maybe not even in Blender 4.1. Now what they want you to do is to go here to the compositing tab and add this glare note. It's very easy. You literally just, this is your render layer, the result of your render. This is the glare note, and you can change to different types of glares. So for instance, we got ghosts right there. We got, uh, that one looks actually quite cool. We got streaks, which is more for like, I don't know, little lights in sci-fi stuff, fog glow, which is also very nice, and you can play around with how much of this thing you wanna have. The mix, of course, is the, the intensity, the threshold is which uh, like amounts of, um, of glow you're catching, depending on the intensity of the lights, and again, you can change how much or how little you want on each of these things. Now, to preview them on your scene, because that's something that I actually had to look for, because I didn't know how to do that specifically, and this is, again, something relatively new, I would say, is that you need to go to the little shading tab over here and change change the compositor to always or to camera, depending where you want to see it. So that way you're going to be able to see the glare once you are inside this thing. But yeah, look at this, like it's lagging a little bit. I got a lot of stuff going on on this scene. Um, it's not a lot of textures, just a lot of like filters and things like that. So, but yeah, this is again, real time rendering. And at any point you can just do a quick render over here and you're going to get the final image way, way faster than you would inside of um, like cycles, for instance. So huge, huge addition here to the Blender world, I would say. Look at that, not too shabby, right? So huge, huge upgrade here to Blender. Uh, <laughs> it looks a little bit weird now. I just recorded the video about Maya and then you like Smart Extrude and then Blender just pfft, drops the freaking bomb with this like real time stuff. I've uh, I've always said that I like competition, especially when softwares are competing against each, each other because ideally everyone will try to outsmart or outdo others and uh, they're hopefully gonna be providing new and better tools as well later on. Uh, but yeah, this is it guys. Uh, we'll probably do a little bit more of a showcase like this Friday we're gonna continue with the weapon that we were doing last week so hey we might do the render here inside of Blender now that we have this real-time EV inside of 4.2 so other than that there is of course a couple of extra new things there's some stuff for cycles um, new materials in this case this sort of like D-Electric principal D BSDF for thin films so if you're doing again, 
bubbles or um, wings. I could see this being used for wings, visors, specific kinds of glasses. Um, new soft volumes. This one looks pretty cool. I don't do a lot of particle work, but for those friends of mine who are doing this, I'm sure this is going to be very, very cool. Uh, this is a new improvement on the noise sample. So you can change this to blue noise, which allows you to, to get like a better result. And then the denoiser helps you a little bit better. This is all of the improvements for cycles. And then there's this whole thing about the extensions. This is interesting. And this is one thing that I definitely applaud to Blender way more than they do it in Maya. Blender has always given me this vibe of a very cooperative or, or community driven software, right? Which is very, very cool because especially in the past couple of years, I've met so many amazing people from um, from the artistic community. And whenever you get to collaborate or, or share things with each other, it's just, it's just a joy. So in this particular case, they're changing how you're going to be like installing things and they're adding this new thing called the extension.blender.org. So what this should allow you to do is install all of these extensions for specific things like Orient and Origin to select it. That's an add-on. These are add-ons, right? But instead of calling them add-ons, they're not calling them extensions. And you can connect this directly through Blender and just like drag and drop all of the things that you want so that you can install and make your stuff more optimize for your specific workflow. There's one thing that I really like, and this is actually one of the things that I always sort of like feel a little bit iffy about Blender. And that's the fact, we've talked about this before, that there's a lot of plugins out there. And if you don't have the plugins, then it's a little bit difficult to work sometimes. But here's the thing, you can create now this thing right here. Where is it? Oh, they talked about it. Uh, da, 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 this one right here. So you can create a specific sort of like repertoire of all of these extensions and, and drag and drop them. So imagine I'm building a team to create a new project, right? And I want everyone to use Blender and I have a, a library of add-ons that I have access to and I want everyone to have access to those as well. I can package that into this sort of like extension and everyone will have the same extension. So no matter who's working on, on Blender, they're all gonna have access to the same elements. So so this is, I would say, a, a step in the right direction to sort of like, uh, again, What's the word? Standardize, standardized practices among uh, productions. Because now, if I just go into a new production, they're saying, "Hey, we're working with Blender. Here you go. This is our extension like package. Just install it, and you're gonna have all of the extensions that we're working with." And that's amazing because now we don't have to be like guessing or figuring out what other people's are doing. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, there's a new tone mapper here, Kronos PBR, that fixes a couple of issues with HDRI. There's some new tools. You guys know I don't do a lot of sculpting and a lot of modeling inside of Blender, but still, these are quite nice to have. They do look similar to the to the cut brush or the um, or the trim brush that I was talking about from Seabrush again a couple of days ago. So yeah, some more stuff here for geometry, geometry notes, um, and that's pretty much it. Remember that this is a long-term support of uh, like. Um, like division, so it's 4.2 LTS. So that means that at least for the next two years, they're gonna be supporting this specific version. This, uh, for those of you that are working with productions or are gonna start working in production, this means that if you start a project today with 4.2, you can expect to have bugs being fixed throughout the next couple of years. So you don't need to update to a new version of Blender in the next couple of months or next year. You can keep working on this one because there will be more bug fixes and things being added to 4.2. Uh, Long-term support is always a good news or a good news because they allow us to, to be sure that whatever new project that we start with this version right here will remain sort of like valid for a long time. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. If you want to check it out, if you want to donate, or if you have more questions, let me know here in the comments. And I'll see you back tomorrow, Friday. Remember, our live stream day. We're going to continue with our weapon, and we're going to have some fun. So hang on tight, and I'll see you back on the next one.